So what is going on guys, Miracle with Word Tech here and today I have a video for you guys. It's another C++ video. We're going to be going over another important data structure that if you are a CS major, you will be taking or if you just want to learn and get a couple helpful tips, then this is a great video. But we are going to be doing, as you guys can kind of tell, we're going to be doing a circular link list from the title of the video. Um, so background information on a circular link list. Uh, circular link list basically is a linear link list except the last pointer the rear pointer technically i guess would be the head of the list is pointing to itself so say if you have five nodes all across here then the fifth one is pointing to the rear of the list and i'll have a diagram up i promise you guys this time of what that looks like so it can be kind of confusing because when we get into our functions especially recursion is really helpful on this uh, you need to have stopping conditions, right? And if you do rear equals rear, you can't really have that as a, if you do this, if you have something like rear equals rear to think that, oh, I'm at the end of the list, it's not going to be that way because you're technically always pointing at yourself always. And plus rear is always changing. The alias is always changing. So it would not work. So today what I'm going to do for you guys is kind of pass down I guess some helpful tips that I learned when I was learning circular link lists from other people and just kind of pass on that knowledge because at first I absolutely hated circular link list I was like I couldn't understand them I was like stopping condition this and that blah 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 this this method that I'm going to show you guys is way way easier it makes everything so much more simple and it's really easy um, I don't suggest uh, some of you guys are probably thinking well why don't you just why don't you just break the list? Why don't you just break rear from connecting to the other rear of the list or rear from head? Why don't you just break that connection? Well, I mean, you theoretically could, but like my professor, if you go take a proficiency demo or a coding question, they're going to tell you, don't break the list. Everything still has to be connected. So, I mean, there's that kind of faulty. So let's get, let's try to jump right into it. So the today's function that we're just going to do is we're just going to do kind of counting functions. Uh, I can make more videos on this data structure specifically, but with the counting function, it's really simple. Uh, it's the same for a circular link list, basically everything else, or sorry, for linear link list, all the code is the same, but rather than checking rear, we're going to check, or rather than checking head, we don't, we're going to check if not rear. If not rear, we want to get out of there, which is basically all of our base cases. We want to check everywhere that if we have a rear, because if we don't have a rear, then that means we know we don't have a list, and that means we just want to get out of there. So we check for rear. Now we go up. So now you're probably wondering why I have two functions. Well, I need a wrapper function for this, and you're going to see right here in the parameters, I'm passing in a node star head, but there's no node star head. There's just a node star rear that we have in main. If you look in, if you look in main, you can see we only have a node star rear. We don't, we don't have a node star head equals null. We just have a rear, but the head is going to come in just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and up in our wrapper function, we're going to actually declare a node star head. And we're going to send node star head to rear arrow next. So the rear, so the front of the list for a circular link list is the last node in the list pointing to the first or pointing to the last one. It's going to get kind of confusing going from uh, circular to linear, but I'm going to have some diagrams. So when we do node star head equals rear arrow next, that means we're pointing to the end of the list or I guess the head of a linear link list. So that means we have that pointer that we're going to use to traverse. We're going to traverse this guy and this guy is going to be the key point to our stopping condition. Now, when we go into this function, we're going to want to return to start a recursive call and we'll do counter, which is the function name. And now we're going to pass in head and then we're going to pass in rear. So head is the rear's alias or the head is going to go to the front of the list pointing that and we're going to traverse only head. So once we have that set up, we are going to go down below and we're going to do this if head double equals to rear, which basically means that we are at the end. We are at the end slash beginning at the list. 
so this is this is our main stopping condition if we don't have this we are gonna go a million times through the loop we're just gonna break the pipe we're gonna do everything so if we're at the if we only have this basically means we have one node we are pointing out ourselves. if we're pointing out ourselves, that means we only have one node so if we are pointing out ourselves, all we simply need to do is just do this we just want to return one because if we're pointing to ourself if rear if head equals rear arrow next that means we're pointing back to ourself or we're pointing to the last one if there's only one node that means we're pointing to ourself that means there's one node else or we don't even need the else we just do return the function call which is counter notice we have head and rear now rear isn't gonna move if we move if we if we say rear arrow next if we say rear arrow next, that means rear arrow next is now going to be pointing to where this is pointing. So really, we're not going to say rear arrow next. We're just going to leave rear. We're going to leave rear at that alias. And we're actually going to traverse with head. Or we're going to move heads to rear's next alias, if that makes sense. Like I said, I'll have diagrams up for this. So boom. And then we just have our normal counter here. One plus... So really we're traversing with head. We traverse with head, go all the way, and then we count until head equals rear. Once head equals rear, that means we know we are at the front of the list. We need to stop, let's stop there, and let's count everything. So within our main, as you guys can see, we have the normal int count equals zero, and then we count, we set count to this wrapper function where we just pass in rear. Rear is gonna go all the way down and recursively call this guy adding functions integer return type you guys know the gist so if we go back here and then we compile we do an a dot out we do an a dot out you can see the list contains eight numbers and then we got an eight right here now if you want to we can do things as if like we are doing a uh like counting for uh counting for like a like an even number let's say so it's basically it's basically the same thing, right? Except you're just gonna add an if statement, and that's gonna be that's gonna be the main gist about for circular linked list, guys. Now that I really thought about it, and when I learned this piece right here, circular linked lists are extremely easy. Think of it as a linear linked list, except you just have to do this one line. If you do this one line and you pass this guy in right here, you basically have a linear linked list until head is equal to rear. That's basically it guys. That is the main, main thing when you're doing circular link list is if you pass in this parameter right here to the function call, you basically have a linear link list and it's beautiful. So guys, I just wanted to start with the basics of this. Uh, practice this. What I suggest doing is go on to different websites, look for linear link list interview questions or just practice questions with integer data structures or integer data types and basically pick out linear link list one and just do them as a circular link list because they're literally the same data structure except one's pointing to somewhere else and you just have to do a node star rear equals rear arrow next and you have a linear link list but guys that is it for this tutorial it is a bit of a short one because i just want to break down the extreme basics of it um it's a great data structure however it's really it really depends you know every data structure has its use its memory its runtime efficiency everything uh, I used this one time before for a queue that I had to do for an airplane program. Um, it's an alright data structure, personally not my favorites to code, but guys that is all I have for this video today. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment below. I'll see you guys for a Friday video and then look out for Ethan's video tomorrow. Uh, and that's all for you guys today and I'll see you guys in the next one.